Hey guys, Robert with 3D Printscape. So the last video I covered unboxing and the initial prints on the SK-1. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get Cura set up for it and connect to Clipper or Fluid um, from your browser on your computer. Two Trees does make it easy because they provide Cura profiles on the USB stick that you can just import. Uh, so that sets up everything for you, including the machine itself. So with that, this should be a pretty short video because it is pretty simple, uh, but you will need to know how to do this so that you can start uh, slicing anything you download online and uh, being able to print it. And you don't have to actually do the second part. You could just put it on an SD card uh, once you have the G-code file, uh, but I prefer to send it um, to the printer um, via the web browser. It just makes it easier because I can control everything remotely. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. If you guys haven't already, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks. All right, so I'm here at the computer. Uh, first thing we wanna do is set up Cura so that we can slice things we download from Thingiverse or whatever other source you're using. The so first thing we need to do is make sure that we got Cura installed. I've got the latest version here. This is just uh, Cura 5.6. And uh, we wanna have our USB stick that came with the printer connected to the computer. Uh, that has all of the files that we need for the install. It's worth noting that if you don't have uh, Cura already installed, you can get um, whatever version was latest when uh, you ordered your printer. So in this case, uh, this was 5.4. They have the install files already in here. You can just run through the installer and use default settings. But let's go ahead and go back to our slicer config in here. I couldn't find the config files online anywhere, uh, so I'll make them available on the website so that you guys can download them in case you lose the USB stick. All right, so let's go ahead and go into slicer config. Uh, they actually make this pretty simple. Uh, go into Cura since that's what we're using here. Uh, they have the G code files, like the start and end for the machine settings. Uh, but if you go ahead and just import one of the examples they have here, so we'll just do the 0.2 millimeter um, quality one here. Uh, so let me just move this off to the side and we'll just drag it into Cura. Just open as project and it's gonna bring up existing settings, uh, basically everything it needs to create the actual machine setting for you and hit open. So now what it did was it added the printer. So if we go into preferences, configure Cura, under printers, we'll see the printer and then the start and ng code that were in there, the files that I was just mentioning and then all of the build sizes and everything in here needed. And it also imports the profile. Um, I imported a couple other ones, uh, but you can see here that they're all here. And then if you go over to uh, selecting the profile, you can go down to custom profiles and you can see the ones that you just imported. So they provide seven default profiles here. Um, I would import whichever ones you think you're gonna use. It doesn't hurt to have them. Um, just do the same thing every time. So just go ahead and drag them over. So I'll just start at the top and then just import then it's just adding them in there so just do that for the remainders that you want to work with and then go ahead and select whichever one you want to use for your first print so in this case I'm just going to use standard and uh, go ahead and bring your file in so for this example I have a wire holder that I downloaded I'm going to close this so you can see here um, I don't like how it positioned that. For those of you familiar with Cura, you know you can rotate it so that this is touching the build service. So we're gonna select this, uh, go down to rotate, and then select this one here, and then select the bottom. And then that made it stand up the way that we want. And then with that, uh, we can just go ahead and hit slice. Assuming you have the printer and the profile selected that you want it to use. And then we're going to go ahead and save this to our drive. So hit save to disk because I'm going to show you how to connect to mainsail, which is the interface that Clipper is using for the printer. So just hit save to disk, save it to uh, wherever you want to save it. I'm just going to put up my downloads. And then let's go ahead and open up a web browser and I'll show you how to connect to the printer. All right, for this part, you need to know the IP address of the printer. So let's go ahead and jump over to the printer really quick. I'll show you where to get that, and then we'll come back here and put that in. All right, guys, sorry for the fan noise here. Uh, I'm going to show you how to get the IP address so the machine has to be on. Uh, so when you first turn on the machine, you're going to be on this page here. To get your IP address, you can go over to Settings, go to Network, and you'll see your IP address right down here at the bottom, which I'll show you how to use that in the next step. 
Uh, if you're not already connected to your Wi-Fi network, you will have to connect to one of those first. Uh, so I'm already connected. All right, now that we got the IP address, we're gonna go to connect to that. You're gonna go and put HTTP in and then the IP address. And we are now connected to the web interface. And I mentioned at the beginning that it was using mainsail. Uh, it's actually using Fluid, so my bad. Uh, the only difference is it's slightly different UI. Uh, it's just an overlay that allows you to be able to connect to the Clipper instance from a uh, web browser. So both of them are options. But if you're not familiar with uh, Clipper or uh, Fluid, uh, it's, this is basically just giving you an overview of all the temperatures. Uh, you can control the printer from here, uh, interact with the console, get the console output, and then see your jobs, see what's connected to it. Basically, it's the remote control interface for the printer itself. So if we go down to history, you can see any job history. So these are those test prints that I was doing for the first video. Um, you can go up to jobs and then go ahead and create a new one. So you can just do plus and then upload or upload and print or just add file. I'm just going to hit upload and select that file that we just saved, which is under download. So it's a G code file here. So now that that is being imported, we can now see it here and we can go ahead and hit print or preheat to get it ready for the print. Um, or you can also go to the printer itself now that it has been uploaded and just kick off the print from there as well. Uh, you can also preview the G-code here, which is kind of cool. So you scroll down to where the preview is, and then you can see what it's doing at uh, each layer. So you see that it's kind of building everything out. But that's really all you need to do to get started being able to slice your own files and printing them uh, with the SK-1. If you're used to using Clipper, you'll feel right at home. If you're coming from Marlin or some of the standard Creality Marlin uh, ports, uh, it will take a little bit to get used to, um, but I believe Clipper overall has a lot more to offer and it's a lot quicker. Uh, and like I mentioned at the beginning of the video and the previous video, a lot more manufacturers are starting to ship their printers with Clipper uh, versus Marlin. It's just a lot faster, uh, but the printer does have to be able to support it. So uh, they have to use quality components, kind of consider the speed and the design. Some of the cheaper printers might have hardware limitations where you have to keep in mind for the speed. Um, though a lot of the newer style printers, your limitations are going to be more on the filament versus on the actual printer itself. All right, guys, so that covered everything you need to be able to set up Cura so you can slice your own STL files and connect to the printer through uh, Clipper or using Fluid. If you have any questions about what I covered or would like to see any other videos, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. And I was also thinking about making videos covering the firmware upgrade process on the printer and on the screen itself. Uh, if you guys are interested in that, let me know as well. Thanks.